author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and I'm here at Seattle's Town Hall with Dr. Judith Orloff, author of The Ecstasy of Surrender. Judith, welcome to Author. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited about this interview. So, Judith, you know, you're a uh, psychiatrist, uh, and that's what your um, college training was in. And I, well, I bring that up, of course, because that's only half of sort of your qualifications for what you do, because you're also an intuitive. Right. Um, and that's not normally what one associates with an MD, which is uh, what you are. So how did these two parts of you come together? Well, you know, I really honor my scientific training and I use it all the time. But since I've been a little girl, I've had intuitions that have come true. And I grew up believing there was something wrong with me because of that. And so my healing path really has been integrating my intuitive voice into my own life as a woman and into my career so that I could combine both the analytic and the intuitive side, you know, which is surrendering to both. Right. It's surrendering to both. People tend to think they're one or the other, and that's really underestimating their capabilities. You know, everybody has both. People are just locked into the habit of being one or the other. Why do you think, um, so you work with individual clients as well as talk to groups, and I'm sure you deal with a lot of people who are locked into one part as being purely analytical, or locked into, I'm, I can't you know, balance my checkbook kind of thing. Uh -huh. Do you think it's stories about themselves that have kept them sort of split like that? Or do you think there are people who really are just meant to do it one way and not the other? Well, it depends on people's preferences. But I think in general, what I've seen as a psychiatrist is that people really minimize what they're capable of. They have no idea what they're capable of in terms of their intuition, their bodies, their minds, they have no idea. They're functioning in such a small fraction of who they could possibly be that one thing I wanted to do with this book was to open up people to who they are in terms of what they're capable of and what they can let go to. Because people tend to be very, very careful, play very close to their vests, they're very afraid, they tend to control everything, um, they want their environment to be safe right. and controlled. And what I'm saying in this book is that it's not possible to really do that. And when you can do it, but when you can't, there's a art and an elegance to letting go and tuning into the flow of life and your own abilities. Um, part of surrendering means surrendering to your own power, not surrendering to your low self-esteem. And by true power, I mean what's inside of you, your heart what's inside of you and how you can summon that goodness and intellect to do good in career, in relationship, when you're going through an illness, as you're going through aging. I've applied surrender to every topic in life and how it can benefit you. One of the things I teach when I teach writing, and this is a magazine theoretically for writers, yeah, is yeah. that writing is about saying, is surrendering to the present moment because you can't yeah, write if yeah. you're worried about the past or fretting about the future, yeah. you can only begin to write. And I think a lot of the reason people have trouble writing is they're not used to being in the present moment, which is the only place creation can happen. Right. Does that make That's sense? That's beautiful. The moment is the only place that... Didn't happen, it's not... It, it, exactly, but inspired, inspired creation. It depends if the writer really trusts the flow and trust the intelligence of the book and the spirit of the book as it flows through you, then the writer is the vehicle for that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a receptive act. It's very different than the ego trying to control every word, then you won't have an ounce <laughs> of inspiration. You know, surrender was very hard for me um, because I was a winner. I wanted to win. That was sort of my model as a young man. Win what? Anything. If there was when, if there's a games, race you to win. I did. I ran races, <laughs> I won the games, and that, I thought that was how you were happy when you won. And the loser surrendered. That was how you let you know that you had right. lost. And well, so, that's the old definition. Right. Yeah. And so it took me a while to start seeing surrender as the end to fighting with life. Yes. Does that's that make sense? That's very well put. And when you think of the athlete in the zone, you know, somebody really moving yeah. with the energy and you know, putting a ball into the hoop, 
You know, they're a guided, that hand is a guided yeah. hand, and the same with the writer. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to be thinking your way to that hoop. No, you, you want to be flowing with that energy into that hoop and being in the zone, and that's where surrender gets you, is in the zone. But in the zone, you're not controlling everything, no. and that's what's so hard for people. So why write this book? It's a big book, it took you four years to write. Um, how did it begin for you? Well, I wanted, when I decided about writing a book, I put a yellow piece of paper down on a table and I kept circling it every day and writing down words that excited me or concepts that excited me. And then I started putting words together and then the ecstasy of surrender came up as I was kind of putting words together. And I realized that what I wanted most for myself was to learn how to more deeply surrender mm -hmm. in my life to have more of that ecstasy. And we write what we want to learn sometimes, don't Absolutely. we? Absolutely, well yeah. I wrote that in the introduction. I never really write what I just know, <laughs> but I write what I long to learn yeah. and discover. Were you, were there times during the writing of it? I'm not sure this is the case for you. I've talked to a lot of writers, but I get in the sense maybe this isn't the case, where you had like, I'll never finish this thing. This is gonna be a catastrophe. I can't bring this together. Or were you, did you feel confident through the whole process? Well, well, no, not at all. I mean, this, this book I wrote in total chaos because when you write a book on surrender, then you, I found out you have to surrender <laughs> everything. Right. And so there started to be incredible noise and construction in the condo where I wrote, and it went on for months and months and months, so I had to run around and find writer studios and fight for my writing and fight for that quiet time. And finally, I couldn't live there anymore, so I fled into the Venice Canals and sold my condo because of unrelenting noise and construction. And I ended up giving away all my possessions as a result of that because that's what I intuitively wanted to do. So I unloaded all of that. And I've had to surrender so many things in the process of writing, um, which has made the book the, have, have the depth that it has. And I, what I love about the work you do is you, you also help people build a muscle, I think, that we don't think of a muscle, which is exactly. intuition, exactly. right? Exactly. And, and I think this is, like, if I had to give writing training, I would yeah. say forget characters and sentences. Build your intuitive muscle. But you yes. help people, like, get in touch with it. Yes, intuition. Not just things you have or don't. No, it, well, I believe everybody has it. And especially if you're writing, you want to get in touch with that flow. You're a vessel for spirit to come through you or through the muses or whoever you feel. Right. And it, it, because to me, there's nothing new under the sun. It's just you're the vehicle for a transmission that could reach people in your unique way. Yeah. You know, but there's nothing new really as far as I know yet. But it, there's a refiltering through your own vehicle and the clearer you are as a writer, the more you'll be of service to the creative forces that flow through you. If you think it's you doing it, I don't think you'll be a very good writer. And you cut yourself <laughs> off from the source of what it is yeah. that answers the questions that yeah. you're asking. Yeah, writing is very sacred. And the flow, the genius of writing, you know, the, the inspiration of writing you know, comes from the little voices that talk to you that are invisible. So do you feel like, so obviously you were trained as an MD, a psychiatrist, and you're an intuitive, so you do a lot of work with people just one-on-one -on -one or in groups, but when did the writer part of you evolve? Where did she come from? I always wrote since I've been little, and then my mother asked if she could compile my poems when I was a teenager. Aww. And she did a self-published book, and I gave her the okay, but I was so embarrassed by the whole thing. And my mother is a doctor, and she gave the book to all her patients. Then everybody knew my inner workings, and I got really embarrassed by it, and I stopped writing for really? a long time. Yeah, because I didn't want to, I felt very exposed by that. Yeah. But then I had a dream and later on in my life about resuming writing and giving up the shame. I had a lot of shame about giving it up because I felt that I was called to do it and I wasn't listening to my calling. Right. You know, but then there were, I had a beautiful dream of forgiveness saying basically lifting that away from me. And then I picked up the yellow pad. This was just when Max were coming in, right before. Right. <laughs> you know, and I started before, and I was started writing on the writing pad. And by the way, Michael Crichton, gave, who was a friend of mine, gave what? me my really? first computer lesson. Really? Michael <laughs> yeah. Crichton? Yeah. <laughs> wow. He and I were friends, and we would talk on and on and on about writing. So I have one more question for you, Judith. And what I'd like you to do is finish this sentence for me. If writing has taught me anything, it's taught me what? Love. Love. You didn't even hesitate. Now, how did it teach you that? Because you have to tune into it.
to write? No, I end this book in the afterword where I'm so grateful for the generosity of this book and how much it's given me in terms of the transformation of myself in, ter in the surrenders that I've been able to do as a result of the writing. The book has its own spirit, you know, and the book has helped me tremendously. And, and so it's given me that surrender and love and the, the deep love of writing that I have and the four years, I mean, the more than four years of devotion to this, you know, it's, it's quite beautiful.